Good day! Here are the stories for the Manila Times for Friday, March 11, 2022. The government on Thursday released 3 billion pesos to help the transport and agricultural sectors cope with ballooning fuel prices. The aid will come in the form of subsidies and discounts. Department of Budget and Management Officer in Charge and Undersecretary Tina Roscanda confirmed to the Manila Times in a text message that 2.5 billion pesos had been released to the Department of Transportation, who will handle the Public Utility Vehicles Fuel Subsidy Program together with the Land Transportation Franchising and Regulatory Board and the Department of Energy. Tanda said another 2.5 billion pesos will be released in April once excess revenues are generated. In a subsequent statement, the DBM said a 6,500 peso subsidy will be given not only to drivers of jeepneys, UV express vehicles, minibuses, shuttle services, taxis, tricycles, and ride hailing and delivery services. The subsidy can be claimed through cash cards from the Land Bank of the Philippines by the identified 377,443 beneficiaries, it added. The Department of Science and Technology has created an app for a mobile electronic dictionary that could help preserve the country's dying languages. The e-dictionary app was created in response to the call of former Education Chief Armin Luistro in 2016 to save native languages from extinction. The DOST said only 183 of 187 local languages are in use, 175 of them are indigenous, and 8 are non-indigenous. It added that 13 languages are endangered while 11 are dying. DOSD Undersecretary for Research and Development Dr. Rowena Guevara emphasized the importance of preserving these languages so that the people who speak them can save their culture. A survey by Dr. Rochelle Irene Lucas of the De La Salle University, one of the proponents of the e-dictionary, showed there are 13,000 remaining speakers of the Hanuo Mangyan, one of the languages of the Mangyan population in Mindoro. Lucas said this indicates the Hanuno language is still used during social interactions at home and the community. Presidential Advisor for Entrepreneurship Jose Maria Joy Concepcion III has highlighted the role of women entrepreneurs in the country's push for post-COVID economic recovery. Concepcion said women make up nearly 90% of micro and small enterprises in the country, so empowering them will be a big step as the country recovers from the pandemic. The Go Negotio founder noted that while Filipino entrepreneurs were already active participants in e-commerce before the pandemic broke out, the crisis exposed gaps in their access to credit as well as their training in digital technology. Health Secretary Francisco Duque III said on Thursday that the Philippines will donate its excess COVID-19 vaccines to selected countries. Duque said the Philippines has more than enough stocks of COVID-19 vaccines, resulting from the country receiving 77 million doses of jabs via the global COVAX facility, higher than the 44 million it was supposed to receive. Duque said the Department of Health is due to coordinate with the COVAX facility on how to proceed with the donations, adding it is done in the spirit of global solidarity. Newly appointed Commission on Elections Commissioner George Garcia said on Thursday he is inhibiting himself from the deliberation of a disqualification case against his former client and presidential candidate, former Senator Ferdinand Bongbong Marcos Jr. Garcia, a veteran election lawyer, said he has written the Comelec Clerk of Court informing it of his decision. He added that he is also withdrawn as counsel of presidential bets Senator Manny Pacquiao, Senator Ping Lacson, and Vanilla Mayor Francisco Isco Moreno Domagoso. Garcia said as commissioner, it's his duty to perform his job with integrity and exercise the highest form of independence expected of every Comelec official. Over to business, Australia-based ANZ Research has warned that rising energy prices could reduce the Philippine gross domestic product growth by as much as 1%. Higher costs push price pressures from rising food and energy costs, it said, have the first-order impact on the Association of Southeast Asian Nations' growth inflation current account configuration. Topping sports, the hottest teams in the PBA Governors' Cup clash today, the final day of the elimination round, with respective goals ahead of the playoffs. The TNT Tropangiga, unbeaten in the past four games, aim to secure a top-four berth and a twice-to-beat incentive in the opening round of the playoffs. The Northport Batang Pier, on the other hand, seeks to secure one of the eight spots in the playoffs. After losing its first five games in the conference, Northport went on a tear and posted five consecutive wins. They battle it out in the main game at 6 p.m. right after the 3 p.m. match between the Meralco Bolts and the Phoenix Fuel Masters, two teams also in need of a win. Rigoberto Tiglao and Ruben Torres are today's front page columnists. Tiglao weighs in on Washington's handling of the Ukraine crisis, while Torres reflects on the doctors that took care of him when he was ill. Today's editorial discusses France's role in patrolling the West Philippine Sea. Read a full version on the paper's opinion section or listen to the voice of the Times. 
For more news and information, get a copy of the Manila Times on print. Subscribe to its digital edition or log on to www.manilatimes.net. Follow us on Twitter, Facebook, or Instagram and keep up with the times. On behalf of the Manila Times, this is Eric John Seco reporting. Have a safe Friday ahead.